Okay, folks, welcome back. I have rebuilt this to the state we were at before we had our catastrophe. I have just PVA glued the spinner back onto the nose. We have transplanted all of the internals into this uh, new old P51A by Accurate Miniatures. We have um, taken a, a step backwards, but we are back where we were. We are ready now to proceed with the steps we need to. So what looked like it was gonna be a huge disaster um, is not, it's okay, we're gonna be fine. And we're ready to proceed. So if you're not aware of what happened, uh, you know, there's gonna be a link in the video description to part one of this build where you can see the dumb thing that I did after working so diligently to produce a nice product here, um, but you know, it, it, things happen, things happen and um, life goes on. So, but we now have um, this uh, P51A Mustang ready for its next steps. A um, little bit of sanding and filling required. The funny part is this one being from the older um, tooling, really, I mean the same kit basically, but uh, there is a slight difference in quality between the old 94 issue and the uh, 2002 reissue. Um, it required a little bit of, of filling in some different places, some in the same places, but we are ready to proceed. Now, before I get going, I'm going to, I didn't tell you guys what I have planned for this plane in the last video. As I get moving and I, I, um, I just finish off the last little bit of the cockpit work, um, painting the instrument shroud, um, painting the gun side a little bit and then putting on the pieces of the canopy. We're going to get ready for our initial steps for priming and painting. And this is where, well, frankly, things get weird. Um, I am not painting this as any, you know, um, standard service P51 of any country. So I, I've said, you know, in the unboxing, and, and I'm pretty sure I said in the last video, I love the shape of the P51A. I've been working on another project that's coming up where I'm going to be doing some of Hasegawa's Area 88 series models. Um, and Area 88 is a, just a phenomenal anime about mercenary fighter pilots in a fictional send it setting, fictional war. Um, you know, modern day, well, modern day for the 80s, 90s, but uh, I just, I love the idea. I've been looking at some old video games playing on, on my computer, Crimson Skies and Strike Commander, um, and you know, some, some other stuff, uh, some other great sci-fi type things. And I've just been playing over and over in my head uh, the idea of, you know, mercenary pilots. Um, I am a Warhammer 40K player. I've been painting um, some of my uh, knights, uh, free blade paint schemes. You know, I, I just love the idea of like a, a rogue kind of guy or gal out on their own, in their plane, their own. Um, so I am painting this, and I'm sure a lot of people are going to hate it, but I am painting this in the paint scheme of, you know, one of those, um, a renegade, um, a mercenary, a, uh, a very self-assured, arrogant kind of guy. Um, I've been I've been doing some egg planes lately that are um, just different. I've been messing around with the Green Stuff World color shift metal paints that I have, and I'm sure, like I said, I'm sure so many people hate these. <laughs> but there's a reason I'm doing these egg planes like this. I want, I want I want them to be very unique, and. Um, I love the color shift paints, and I'm sure it's not coming out great with the positioning of the camera and the lights, but they do some really nice colors. Uh, some of them, are, you know, are much better at the shifting than others. Um, I have a 144th scale uh, YF23 that I did the top and bottom in different colors just to test them out. So, yes, the final paint job is going to include some of these color shift paints which is gonna make this look more like a kind of 70s hot rod than a fighter plane. Um, but 
it's good. Like I said, it's going to get weird. I can't wait to do it though. Um, I think it's going to look, it, I mean, I know for a fact it's going to look very unique. I said in the initial video, it's going to use some custom printed decals that I'm going to run off and make. Um, it's going to, it's certainly going to be an eye catcher. So from this point on, we've got our basic construction done. I'm ready to start getting it ready for priming, which of course is going to be with those kinds of paints behind us. We are going to want a beautiful glossy black finish. So I'm going to use tried and true Alclad lacquers. This is the best, in my opinion, the best gloss black base you can ask for. So that's going to be our base once I get the canopy on and everything and start working on it. What's really great about it is I love to do, and, and you know, if you take a look in this guy right here, um, I love to do trim and, you know, um, accents on things like this as they did in World War II, you know, in black and using this as a great primer, but also a really nice, um, it's a surfacer and it also gives you a nice great black coat so then i can just mask off the areas i want to keep black like black stripes on the wings or, or whatnot um anti-glare panel you know whatever it's already there and it works as, as a great paint and primer all in one um, so it's going to work out really really well for us i, I know right now some of you're saying this is going to be the most god-awful ugly project ever it might be i don't know i'm, I'm just playing with it right now the only other heads up I can give you is think Luftwaffe camouflage scream, World War II, um, you know, BF-109, Fuck Wolf 190. Although that probably doesn't help you right now trying to figure out what kind of a mess I have going on in my head. But I, I'm hoping it's going to be cool, guys. So I'm going to get um, canopy parts on there. Even though you didn't see a lot of P-51As flying around with Malcolm Hood canopies, I really like the look of it and just to refresh um there's the the birdcage hood and then the malcolm hood which means we're gonna have to um kind of fudge a little bit and instead of the one straight radio antenna we're gonna have to make a radio whip antenna because obviously you couldn't you couldn't move this kind of thing back over and that's how the malcolm hoods move they slid back and forth as opposed to the birdcage ones that had a door that opened up you're not going to be able to slide this back over a big fixed metal radio antenna that's what the whip antenna did so we'll make one of those um, and we'll get this thing all prepped i already have the prop done from the last iteration of this project i've been talking for way too long now though <laughs> So we have a very nicely gloss black base coated plane. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start a little bit of masking. We're going to keep some areas glossy and black, and then we're going to prepare for the paint job. So the two colors that we're going to be painting for the, well, I'm calling it camouflage, but clearly it's not camouflage. Green Stuff World, Cobalt Blue, and Celestial Azure. Oh, there, now you can actually see them. Um, these are my two favorite of the color shift paints. So uh, I'm, I'm still on the fence about how this is going to come out. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually about 40% uh, about that I'm going to like this and about 60% that I'm going to wish I hadn't done this by the time it's all done. Now I've done uh, two clear coats, uh, well two processes of clear coating, one with the actual Aerogloss by Alclad and then another clear coat of gauzy on top so the first thing i'm going to do is i want to protect and i went a little thick on the clear a little thicker than i than i wanted to but i've had some issues recently so i just wanted to make sure i was doing a really nice protectant of all this so the first 
clear coat that I'm going to do. I mean, the first, sorry, the first masking I'm going to do. I'm just going to use some panel lines for this. Is mask from the nose straight back to the canopy. Just going to use that panel line right there as my landmark, and I'm going to go straight up to the spinner. I want to be really careful since the spinner is really only PVA glued on. Now, there's not much holding that spinner on. So, And then I'm going to cut this in line with the windscreen. for the other side. Now this is the side right. I put that clear coat on pretty heavy. Luckily I can still see the panel line as kind of a landmark to use there. And what I'm also doing is to minimize the tackiness of the tape, putting it on my pants leg, just to take some of the tack off so that it doesn't pull up on the paint job too much. a lot of time just cutting these masks kind of freestyle for what I wanted boy I hope this comes out good I really hope it comes out good so the first color I'm gonna put on is gonna be the Celestial Azure I'm gonna give it a really good shake and then run it through the airbrush and let's see how this comes out
Wow, lots of time taping to get this ready for the next color. But we are ready for the cobalt blue. So let's put our second color on here finally. As I remove this tape, in this light at this angle, the cobalt blue really just looks purple. It is, at the right angle, it's a very nice blue. And I think when I put the clear coat on everything, you'll be able to see that blue a lot better. Right now it is, what a lovely color for Easter, <laughs> the light blue and the purple. But you're really gonna, you know, again, this is all, it's color shift paint. So it depends on the light and the angle that you're looking at. And as I move the plane around, and I think that being right next to the light blue, definitely enhances the purple look of the cobalt blue but at, even as I stand up to look at it from the top down um, it has a much more blue look to it um, so I did say this is a grand experiment and I wasn't sure how I was going to take to the colors because uh, I really like the I like each color a lot on its own but with these color shift paints a lot of times just like one of those um, the kind of pictures that you stare at and the picture jumps out at you it, It's different once you put the clear coat on and really helps the Whatever it is that shifts the color uh, Looking at it under a, a shiny coat really brings it to life a lot better So let me continue to remove all this tape ah, Two hours putting the tape on just that little time of spraying, and now we're taking it all off. Oh boy, so you know what I don't understand? Or maybe it's just me, maybe I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, videos where the, the workbench is never messy, ever. Like nothing's ever on it. Uh, anyway, so messy workbench, yeah. Lots of used tape. So you, you saw it first, I was I was horrified. And as I'm looking at it, I'm this angle, um, it's purple. But yeah, boy, it was a very sweet tart looking plane. Very purple and, and turquoise, um, but with the addition of the clear coat, and we're back to the um, aqua gloss, we've got a nice dark blue and light blue going on. Still not exactly what I had envisioned. I don't know what I was what I was really thinking, but um, you can see how it's it's pretty cool how the addition of the gloss coat really translates the colors around and transforms them. So you know, in the right angle, you're still going to get that that very blue to purple look on this plane. But remember, when I when I said initially what I'm looking for is the the personal mount of an ace of a, you know, somewhere in between super arrogant and just very confident and cocky, um, you know, pilot, mercenary privateer pilot. And if this doesn't do it for you. So what I was going for with the camouflage is um, somewhere between um, RAF and Luftwaffe camouflage. 
uh, World War II style. And maybe maybe now that you see the pattern I've, I've put on it, you, it kind of makes a little bit more sense. A uh, lot of work, but I, I like it. I like it. And in this light now, it's it's looking dark blue, light blue. It's looking more of a teal. It's, it's just really funny because if you look at these colors individually, they take on a very different look. When you put them on together, um, they sort of, they play off each other and bounce off each other. Now I can't get them to... I mean, in real life, I'm seeing the color shift, um, but it just, I guess with them right next to each other, especially on camera and the way the camera plays with light and everything, it, it, I don't know. I bet if I brought it out in daylight though and messed with it, like it would get a very different look. And of course the camera's at a very different angle. And even though I move the plane around, the point of view of the camera is not moving, but you know, let's also not forget this is not the final look of the plane. I've got some personal decals that I printed out. Um, these are printed. This is clear decal paper. This is white decal paper. Uh, and I printed, well, we'll talk about the markings I'm putting on as I go. Now, these are just images I have on my computer that I wanted to print. Uh, fairly unique shark mouth that I want to do. And the reason I did this on white paper is because of the white of the teeth. It's easier than having to put a white background on and everything. Um, the skull and crossbones is clear because I'm gonna just cut that out. We'll talk more about the decals as we go. Um, but um, printing your own decals is actually not that hard a process. It gives you almost an infinite capability to put markings you want on the plane. They're not the only ones I'm going to do. I'm going to use some other stuff from other sources too. But these are the ones that I, I needed that I, I can't I can't just pick up anywhere, you know. Um, but I found the images. I've also got this really cool sheet from Green Stuff World. I have a huge folder full of just different nose art images and everything on my computer that I can print up whenever I want. This has these and it also has just numbers and kill markings and all sorts of stuff. And then, you know, spares from all over the place. That's why I keep every set of decals, whether I use them or not, or they use all of them or whatever, I always keep them. So I, I have lots of possibilities for this. Um, I don't know if there's an interest. Uh, there's already all, probably a lot of videos on the internet about how to print off your own decals and stuff. Um, if that's something that would interest folks for me to, to put one out about how to, how to produce your own decals, more than willing to do that, let me know. But we'll see these come into play uh, later on. So I've got a little bit of detail painting to do. Um, these panel lines are actually still pretty good for the very shallow panel lines in the kit. I thought about scribing them a little bit deeper. I might, I might have, we're doing a lot of gloss coats with this uh, in between colors and overall and everything. So, you know, I was worried they were gonna get filled up. I didn't want to go crazy with it. Um, and it's really funny because camera angle versus my eye angle, as I'm looking down at the camera lens, it's totally dark blue, light blue. As I'm looking directly at it, it's completely two different shades of purple, you know, based on the angles of light. Um, yeah, nice. Um, so, all right. You know, what's also cool about the uh, P51A has almost like a Spitfire sort of look, sort of profile to it. Um, neither here nor there. So, got to get working on a lot of detail painting before we actually get to the decals. So, let's get that done, and then we will be ready to put some markings on this very unique and uh, I'm sure plain a lot of people are not going to like, but if you think about sort of the sources that I was, the source material and ideas that I was talking about, you could see this plane fitting in pretty nicely to those worlds, right? So, all right, let's move it on. <laughs> 